Hi guys, in today's video we will look into the scenario in which all the Stan nations unite forming Stanistan. It would have approximately 278 million people, or would become the fourth largest nation by population, meaning it would be behind the US and ahead of Indonesia. It would also be 5.5 million square kilometers, making it the seventh largest country in size behind Australia. The largest city in Pro is would be Karachi, Pakistan, with a population of 9 million-ish. But I've seen Kesh becomes its most wealthy city, so it would probably become the capital, or Karachi, one or the other. It, it would have 975,000 active military personnel, which would be ahead of countries like Russia, slightly Iran by a big margin, and South Korea by an even larger but less than North Korea, so fourth most active personnel. GDP, 597 billion. Actually, it'd be the fifth, I think, fifth most active personnel. GDP is 597 billion. Average income is only 3,000. Av military budget is 21.5 billion. Religion would mostly be Muslim. Their largest trading partner would be China, then the EU. Would have border disputes, because they would still probably be claiming Kashmir. And probable ally would probably be someone like China, because they probably wouldn't be allies with India. And let's get into the video, as we know those are lots of statistics. They would probably cause something with Iran, because Iran, as we know, has in the past clashed inside some of these territories. And this is something. Iran didn't expect this. But since... Iran only has like 575 active personnel, and, and Stanistan has about a million. I don't think that's really a fair match. But it's probably not going to make it the easiest to win. With them quickly moving down to take Iran's capital, Tehran, and they quickly succeed in this. With their next battle being a coastal taking. And seeing that's being hard to advance because of all the troops they're up against. They start more fronts along the border. They move down the Caspian Sea. At this point, they get three nations to join. Turkey, because why not, because they don't like Iran. Azerbaijan, because they want Azeri territories. And Iraq, because they want Khuzestan still. We'll still be giving them Khuzestan, because why not. If Iran decided to make Stanistan making an offensive here to try and secure their taking of Tehran, which actually goes really well. As Iran struggles to hold territory, Iraq starts moving in in the north and south. They send divisions all across the border along with Turkey and Azerbaijan. At this point, Iran is probably spread very thin and at this much thin spread for Iran. It's not going to end well. With the coastal attack going pretty well, but a spearhead is made to connect with this spearhead. In other ways, they're trying to take this over with the coastal push going pretty well. A push is made here to try and cut off Iran into multiple pieces. Iran loses access to 70% of its oil and probably a lot more. They lost access to the coast, no trade. They smother and they surrender. Because they had nothing to do. Kind of like what happened to Arsac. But anyways. They basically just fell because they couldn't bring any money in. And if you don't have money, you can't have a war. So let's see how the border is ready to quickly secure the border with India. India does something almost shocking. They basically declare war on them. And since they declared war on them. I need to just switch the colors because we're going to have India declare war on them. And as India declares war on, they're shocked and not ready to quickly respond. This is a big shock. So they start getting close to China to get, like, resources, aid, and stuff. But at this point, they kind of retreat a bit. Because there's not enough troops at the border to hold them back. They quickly lose Karachi. So they probably move their capital if they picked Karachi all the way to Kashkarat. Mind my bad. Speaking of this, but anyways, I can't pronounce it. Anyways. And so India makes huge advances because they have a huge, a lot of active personnel. Kind of because they have a big population. The U.S. has a big military because it spends a lot of money on it. But that's beside the point. 
And then you're still making offensives that they can't hold back. These offensives seem to be going well. As they move up the coast and over there, they're now making another offensive towards Tashkara. They also make a coastal offensive, but at this point, they didn't see what was coming next. With a huge offensive pushing them out of the north. And then another counter-offensive in the center of their holdings. Taking back Islamabad and going and take back Karachi, quickly encircling this group of soldiers. And then they encircle another group of soldiers. Not all of them, but most of them. India retreats to a defendable area. As it seems, this is collapsing. China decides to invade to get what it wants. Not exactly invading the mountainous area. No, they are invading a mountainous area. But they're not really invading over here. Except the few troops help Pakistan make an encirclement. Which, once the encirclement is made, India focuses on its front, which is over here. They even talk Bangladesh into joining because they're like, oh, we can give them land. You'll get land out of this and everything you could want. And this seeming too good to be true. Just kidding. But Bangladesh joins. India's fighting a multi-front war, probably about to lose its capital, guys. And we'll soon have the surrender because there's no other choice. But it's holding on to its capital well. Stanistan is starting to hold the front because all they're focused on is the capital, Delhi, which they're starting to encircle. Bangladesh and China manage to take over this area and start moving in. And then they pause here. China starts an offensive up there. With the help of China, Stanistan manages to take Delhi, which quickly causes this to happen before India decides it's time to surrender. India learned its lesson, but the hard way. So let's see how the peace treaty. There's a success for Ukraine. And the weakness is seen by Kazakhstan as a good chance. So they tell all the members of Stanistan. So basically, Stanistan is a constituency. Has a capital city, but also has different like constituents. Basically, all the stands. Every like population of different ethnicities, basically... For the sake of this video, let's say they all made, like, their own, like, kind of, like, governments within the structure. With, uh, multiple offensives by Stanistan, mostly in the mostly populated areas, a bit of an area created here, or known as a safe zone, secure the border to make sure Russia doesn't launch an offensive. They quickly move over towards Ukraine, they meet with Ukraine's border, and they move up into this region. Russia doesn't know what hit it. They have more troops than Russia, and always have this whole video, and they have more than they had at the beginning, because they probably conscripted a bit of troops. And they're moving up Ukraine's border, and Belarus, Belarus says so nobody can help Russia. And they quickly move up to Moscow. They take the capital of Russia for the first time since the 16th century. But anyways. Anyways, with the fall of Russia, the rest of Russia gives up. Well, not how you think they gave up. They gave up by declaring independence. So half so three, two-thirds of Russia just left Russia, with the exception of that area that's kept by Stanistan. Let's see what Stanistan does now with the peace treaty. Significantly, with India, borders have changed significantly. Russia is a puppet, so is the Caucasus region. Azerbaijan is much larger. Stanistan is probably too big to stand, but let's say it stands anyways. This is Stanistan. Well, that's pretty much all for today's video. Please like, subscribe, and comment. You might think, why didn't they invade China or be enemies of China? But that's because it was their best bet. And that's pretty much all for today's video. Please like, subscribe, and comment.
And thank you for watching today's video. Bye, guys. But remember to subscribe so you can get to 2,000 subscribers by January 1st. Bye.